Warhammer 3, a game loved by everyone, has just released another DLC adding three more lords into the game, CIA, Mother Russia, and a coked up dragon sexually attracted to large quantities of currency and public executions. So as a mentally stable businessman and a wealth enthusiast, I am the chosen one. I decided it would be a fun idea for us to expand our hoard of gold through careful strategic planning, morally bankrupt decisions, and dubious trade deals. Unlike most factions, we start with two settlements, one in South America for undisclosed agricultural reasons and one in China for distribution reasons. Additionally, Cathay factions have a unique mechanic of being able to send out caravans of goods to various cities for those capital gains that can bring in some good money, granted they don't become chow mein on the way. We also have some pretty interesting faction bonuses to boost our trade as well as research. One of them being the ability to see inside other factions as long as you have a trade agreement, meaning we need to have at least one drug dealer in every city of the world. On paper, to win our campaign, we need to build a specific monuments that will grant us access to our compass abilities, such as boosting our caravan value by stashing drugs into our prison pockets, thus unlocking a certain battle that will auto win our game. In reality, we only care about one thing, accumulating wealth. So I started off by introducing a rigorous conscription campaign back in China and raising a new army mostly consisting of farmers, using two stones to speed it up. These stones are a unique resource, which we can use to perform various actions, ranging from speeding our 5-year plan to some pretty insane abilities. Upon usage, the resource will begin to convert to the opposite side, which takes about 5 turns per stone. Our faction leader on the other side of the world will have the pleasure of fighting free armies of crazed enemy fanatics. To help lubricate this forced transition of management, like other Cathay factions, our leader has a unique ability of transforming into a dragon. We don't have any crazy skills yet, but later we'll unlock something called Executioner's Blade. After inducing a catnip frenzy along with our general to minimize the casualties, we sent them into the meat grinder, selling any captives which were greedily picked up by Chaos Dwarves. That was just the end of turn 1, after which we got attacked by their second army and upon victory at peacefully subjugating another settlement, the game offered us to sell our capital for 20k. To an untrained eye, the deal might sound lucrative, but selling it would be a mistake for two reasons. We get 5% bonus research for each provincial capital as well as additional 7% from edicts, which doesn't sound a lot right now, but it adds up. And second, we'll need a capital to spread further violence in the region. So instead, I joined two additional wars with my neighbors for money. With that in mind, it was time to forcefully acquire a workforce in our province. They had a slight superiority in numbers, but were mostly consisting of zombies, or shunned members of society, perfect for our future economy. After besieging the final enemy cities in Lustria and establishing a trade agreement with one of the only few factions on that side of the world that doesn't want to kill us, we signed a bunch of agreements with other Cathay factions. Which, speaking of, I have secured a non-aggression pact in a trade agreement with the ogres, so our caravans wouldn't get raided as much and we could squeeze out as much coin as possible, which your allies will constantly try to undo. To stop us, the AI had a brilliant strategy of increasing the size of their army outside of their city walls, which I attacked, forcing them to run away, and that allowed me to besiege their next city and ultimately take it. Gentlemen, you know what we don't need? Competition. So we declared a hunting season for lizards, which forced them out of their capital. However, it did not stop us from almost getting killed, and after recruiting the local peasant population, we finished them off quickly. Both of our allies got attacked by the vampire factions, and since I want to confederate and unite all China, and keep the power balance in Colombia. I joined both of them in a war about as fun as eating glass, as well as attacking the Skaven because what's the worst that could happen? After battling what seemed to be an endless ocean of rats, I barely managed to get out with the low casualties of about 80%. We fled and began recruiting a second army during which they took back their capital and sent two armies to our home region, which we successfully intercepted thanks to involuntary conscription. Next, I attacked one of the only other human factions in Colombia, which kind of seemed to upset our allies, and since our only other ally was so weak and managed to lose their army, I was able to confederate them, inheriting their lands, conflicts, and a whopping single unit of peasant archers, forcing me to buy a third general. Luckily, we were getting so rich off of exporting medicinal herbs that we could afford it, making it just in time for the attack as we couldn't protect all of our settlements. The war got a little bloody and a lot of our people might have died, but that was a sacrifice I was willing to make. My god, willing to make? With the full force, we came back to the Skaven capital, taking it back once more, making me realize one very important detail about our faction. Our rage units are very broken, but our happiness was short-lived. 
You see, this is actually really bad. I was barely handling the endless rat armies and the dark elves. Trying to conscript as many soldiers as possible, the entire north front has opened and we had a lot of cleaning up to do against the Skaven, dark elves and the chaos factions too. Luckily, we still had a somewhat less useless ally pushing through the mountains. With the rats down to their last army, the dwarves losing their army of happy workers, grinding us extra cash and the elves being pushed to the last cities. I secured a trade agreement with the ogres and the Russian factions, so our caravan were getting through, securing our vital economy. With the last cities of both Skaven and the Dark Elves taken, and their armies scattered, it was the end of the Rats and the Blessed Dread, eliminating both factions in quick succession. We got a war declared by the pirates, and our ally has conveniently placed a dagger on our back for safekeeping. Parked their army next to my city, cancelled military access and the trade agreement. Call me paranoid, but I might need a new ally. But first, I put on a white tank top, got some beer and a pack of cigarettes, as well as asking our neighbor French colonies to sign an NDA, making sure nobody interferes in our relationship talk. They had a numbers, but it was split between multiple cities, and our standing army was stronger in a solo fight, taking one of them out immediately. The second army was on the move, which we intercepted and started a totally fair fight against the faction leader. The pirates that commenced a sneak attack against us were besieging our city. Whilst our garrison was somewhat enough to stop one of their armies, I still sent a relief force to deal with it, managing to repel their invasion and brokering a peace deal immediately. While we could definitely take over their cities, we had no use for them, and we'd be forced to station a garrison. It's much more enjoyable finding proxy wars and letting someone else get their hands dirty, taking the page out of a US war book, infiltrating the high elf societies with our dirty opium merchants and CIA. Not to mention, they still had one more army next to our city, so we gave them a warning to leave. The thing is, their army is currently stationed within our city limits, meaning they can't move it, so we get the, both the money and the pleasure of killing them again. The colonies were on the last legs and only had a few more cities left for us to liberate, posing no threat nor resistance, eventually destroying them, not to mention the newly homeless population that set up tents outside our city, giving us a choice, force them into endless labor or, with rats and dark elves defeated, I engage the chaos factions, starting with dwarves, by pushing through the gates in the northeast, threatening to cut off their armies from escaping. We got into an ambush, with a fight already starting not necessarily in our favor. As usual, under my command, it turned into a complete bloodbath, but because it was only one out over two armies, we were able to chase them down while the second army took the gates, allowing for reinforcements and better tactical position. Our third army pushed them from the south, started sieging down a settlement, locking their other army in place. With the odds against us, we still managed to win once again thanks to catnip, making sure there are no survivors, resulting in a relatively low casualties, to my own surprise, after which I signed a military alliance with the other bigger Cathay faction, in hopes of confederating them in the near future. The war was going well and we were pushing the enemy factions out of their lands. Well, our lands, with the ultimate target being the gates that are easily defendable. The greenskins were starting to grow out of control, eliminating our trade partners, and with it, the safe passages for our caravans. But that's a problem for the future. And by future, I mean right now. However, this great move by the AI has presented us with an opportunity, as for the brief moment, the balance of power allows us to confederate them, letting us absorb their country, but locking us into a war with the greenskins. After defeating the chaos armies, they, together with the chaos dwarves, have sued for peace, which I accepted because I didn't want to deal with the chaotic wastelands in this particular moment, or any moment in the future, which will allow us to divert our full focus towards the greenskins. We sent our scouting armies to probe their defenses, securing a foothold in the mountains. So in order to save our economy, and well, our cities, we're gonna human way our way through the mountains with pure numbers. So to buy some time, I was seeking for a quick peace deal, which at first they were reluctant to accept, even if we offer one of their settlements back with some of their populations still alive. But gentlemen, indulge me in a bit of cheese. By constructing a military building, which was around 840, and rushing the construction using our faction ability, we basically skyrocket the value of the settlement, in turn giving us a peace agreement with a healthy 650% interest. In the meantime, we still had unexploited pockets of liberals in our lands, conspiring behind our backs and forming unholy alliances with the chaos, which proved to be a little stronger than anticipated, after moving in to finally get rid of the Florida man who just stood there all game, menacingly. Also, we had one and the final Cathay faction to confederate for the grand unification of China, so I began by spoiling them with outrageous wealth, making them want to join me instead of living with public urinations. How did they repay me, you ask? By declaring an early war against the Greenskins, breaking my treaty and lowering my reliability, which other factions didn't take too kindly. I don't mind the wars, but I do mind losing potential streams of revenue, since a significant portion of the trade value was funding my office of human rights oppression. It was imperative to restore the good nature of our opium merchants 
governments across the lands. That being said, congrats, public executions have just been legalized. To restore faith in our leadership, we got a box of delights, giving us a choice between inhaling the contents ourselves or distributing across our population. Naturally, I infused it into our water supply, making our settlements grow faster in what can only be described as a breeding frenzy. We got attacked while our army was still on their way, so to buy some time, we sent the peasants to their deaths, whilst getting into position, a position for a tactical nuke, obliterating their units and my own. But as if that wasn't enough, they came back for round two, which unsurprisingly resulted in them offering us a peace deal, but since our only source of entertainment was killing Grimgore for 38th time, I declined, ultimately driving them out of their settlements and leaving them with a single city just for the sake of the socio-economic instability in the region will be leaving them alive. But the chaos spawn somehow managed to tunnel under our walls, infiltrating our lands crossing the desert like Moses, which was a very clear violation of our pact of do not come into my land. So we decided to revise history and even though our units were lower tier, they were coked out of their minds, where neither the flames nor magic media could hurt us, chasing down the Siamese twins and finally reclaiming the gates from those wretched hands of chaos dwarves and the workers. And even though they had the numbers, you just can't match the power of terrain and our army of navy seals. Not having learned their lesson, they sent a second army to the gates and attacked us again. And while we were perusing our POWs, they offered us an insulting amount for a peace deal. So we resumed the negotiations by decimating another city, which seemed to have inspired enough motivation. Now with just the chaos spawn left and their endless magic, it felt like fighting a dooms guy responsible for more than half of our casualties. Since we were forced into multiple wars again and were facing many rats ambushing our armies, some of their tactics were questionable. They still managed to overwhelm us with pure numbers. Luckily, we had a second army nearby, which we used to counterattack with another army on the way. And after securing their settlement, I decided to move down the coastline, taking everything in our path, starting with the Dark Elves, which after one round, they would already throwing in a towel. But the fun was just beginning. By getting another army, something that can clear the corruption, by corrupting other factions with monetary gains, we continued our advance, burning down the Dark Elf huts with our superior magic and arrows. After finally restoring our good name and the dealer reputation and securing precious resources, everybody suddenly wanted to get a piece of the action, beating our ever-growing economy, but the drugs we previously put into our water supply have mutated the local plant life into consciousness, which we had to convert into paper, making us the world's first paper farmers. With them out of the way, I decided to attack the vampires after occupying the southern part of the mountain pass by fabricating a story and spreading rumors that they were eating our children. I positioned our armies next to their borders and began our assault taking settlements quickly as their armies were mostly in the narrow passages in the mountains, which we scrambled to intercept whilst also maintaining pressure in the south. Speaking of pressure, we were on the final assault against the elves, sieging down their last army. To make sure we don't have to fight them against the walls and instead start them out, they attempted to bargain by offering us pocket change worth of coin. I employed one of our favorite strategies of luring the enemy general away from the safety of their troops to get the Julius Caesar treatment. Meanwhile, the hordes of zombies have foolishly taken the bait of our protected settlements, pushing further into the mountains with very little avenues of escape. After they overextended, we mounted a counterattack by destroying two armies in a quick succession and eliminating any sort of advantage they might have had. Then, via carrier pigeons, we informed our two southern armies to start slowly creeping their way towards the settlement. We managed to split two of their armies remaining in the mountains mountains, ensuring our inevitable victory and the destruction of the unholy mounds of zombies. Now, I was going to begin the construction of these relays that will grant us various boons that were locked all game, which technically we could have gotten earlier, had I focused less on genocide and more on the construction side. That manifested in us having a tremendous amount of riches, thanks to our troop of caravans filled with delights, which we were happy to share with our beloved customers, quickly improving our relations with most of the factions. Upon completion of these monuments, we'll have to hunt down the lizard incursion who seek to destroy it. After finishing two more zombie armies and maintaining a strong hold of the mountain pass to stop any further attacks, we let our southern armies link up and make the final assault on the remaining forces, after which the settlement will be left pretty much undefended. We attacked the flayed rock and killed two more armies, crippling their ability not to die, which was followed by the final big battle. Having faced better odds, we took a defensive position and the dead came crashing down on us harder than the realization that you're almost 30. Luckily, we had guns and magical beasts, but 
like with all wars, by eliminating the leadership, we're able to crumble away their army, leaving us with a surprisingly low amount of casualties. As for Lustria, the only last remaining threat in the region were the Skaven, leaving us with a tedious job of cleaning up the environment. And even though their armies weren't as good, they still had the numbers, despite repeatedly getting their heads smashed in with a refrigerator, constantly ambushing us, pushing deep into the jungle, facing many more Skaven, and defending with little reinforcements that we had available using an age-old tactic strategy of human waves, which as usual turns into a bloodbath if not for our carefully timed magical attacks. After eliminating most settlements and few more armies, our campaign was drawing near its end. With the completion of the monument, we were gaining access to the bonuses that will prove most helpful. Send more trade deals, becoming the powerhouse of exports. Our economy was booming, along with the enemies of the state. Even the chaos dwarves have decided they could pretend not to hate us just to get the tax relief on our goods. Thanks to our boxes of delights, our scientists were speedrunning books at alarming rates, granting us a 780% extra research speed. China was secure, and all that was left was South America. We continued our push down the coastline and into the jungle provinces, which were still full of big game hunting. Lizards with their tiny reptilian brains could not hold their own against our might. To expand our purge, we also included a beastmen that were vagabonding outside our settlement, and became a sugar daddy of other human factions. To maintain a peace and stability in valuable regions, as our profits rely on having customers being alive. After the last Skaven were destroyed, we got a short campaign victory, continued construction of our monuments, and got a warning about the end times coming in 10 turns. We strengthened our alliance with the elves by signing defensive pacts, promising we'll come to their aid, we won't, but false promises are still beneficial. The big ogre horse people decided to take this opportunity to commence a surprise attack, which was perfect since I wanted to try out our new armies, made specifically to deal with anything that moves, and they did, straight into our arrows, barely even managing to reach our front line before being inevitably cut down by all the crossbowmen and fair duels, which to my surprise lasted longer than I thought it would. We still stationed a few garrisons in front of the trees just in case. After the last monument was completed, we got a final battle mission which if we win, will win our entire campaign. Since none of them spawn in our lands, I will honor my agreement of not caring and not going to help anyone physically, and instead focusing on the final battle. The lizards are attacking our homeland. Finally, I was able to test out my fully upgraded Executioner's Blade, attempting to solo the enemy, almost dying in the process, and still managing to kill him. After leaving the peasants on the walls to their deaths and retreating into an inner sanctum, decimating the dinosaurs like they were nothing, winning the campaign, and we lived happily ever after. Well, that's just lazy writing.